Genghis Khan, the renowned Mongolian warrior ruler, is known for his superior military tactics and establishment of the Great Mongol Empire. However, it is also well known that he was ruthless toward his enemies, committing unspeakable acts against them. In this video, we will discuss some unthinkable things he did to those who opposed him. Despite seeking advice from holy men of various religions, including Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, and Taoism, Genghis Khan held particular contempt for Muslim and Jewish people, referring to them as his slaves. He humiliated and enslaved people from other religions by forbidding them from following their customs, such as Muslims being forbidden to kill sheep and Jews being denied the practice of circumcision. Khan believed they should follow his rules if they lived in his kingdom. One of the most notorious incidents was his revenge for the death of his favorite son-in-law. He ordered his troops to attack the city and slaughter every person, resulting in the deaths of around 1.7 million people, including women, children, and even animals. Their skulls were later piled into pyramids as a macabre trophy of his conquest. Furthermore, when he was 20, he led an army against the tribe that killed his father to seek revenge. The Tater army was defeated, and every Tater man was measured against the linchpin of a wagon, which was the axle pin in the middle of the wheel. Anyone found taller than the hook was to be beheaded, resulting in the beheading of anyone over 90 centimeters tall. While Genghis Khan's military prowess and accomplishments are notable, his cruel treatment of his enemies cannot be ignored. In 1211, Genghis Khan shifted his focus to modern-day China and launched an attack on the Jin Empire. Despite the empire's much larger population of 53 million compared to the Mongols' 1 million, however, within three years, the Mongols had conquered their way to Jengdu, now known as Beijing. Surrounded by 12-meter-high walls stretching 29 kilometers, making entering nearly impossible, the Mongols laid siege to the city and the people of Zhengdu soon began to starve. By 1215, hunger and cannibalism were rampant inside the walls, and the city surrendered to the Mongols, who proceeded to burn it to the ground. The massacre's aftermath was horrific, with eyewitnesses noticing that the bones of the slaughtered formed the White Mountains, and the soil was greasy with human fat. Genghis Khan's life was marked by violence and strife from a young age. His father, a powerful chieftain, was poisoned by an enemy tribe, leaving Genghis and his family homeless and scavenging for food. He quickly learned that he would have to fight and kill for what he needed. One day, he caught a fish to bring to his family, but his half-brother snatched it from his hands and refused to share it. They argued, and in a rage, Genghis killed his brother with a bow and arrow. In battle, Genghis was ruthless and cunning. He would capture enemies and use them as human shields, selectively choosing who to spare based on their skill and attitude. He also had specific rules of honor, such as not spilling noble blood, but the alternative methods of killing were just as brutal. For example, in 1223, the Mongolians celebrated as the Russian army surrendered and their towns were captured. The generals of the Russian military were forced to lie down on the ground, and a heavy wooden gate was thrown at them. Tables and chairs were placed on the gate, and the Mongolians sat down for a feast, crushing the Russian nobles to death. Genghis Khan would marry his daughters to his allies to solidify his power, forcing them to cast out their other marriages so that his daughters could be the only heirs to the throne. Later, he would send these kings to the front lines of the Mongolian army, essentially using them as pawns. Genghis Khan was a complex and brutal figure whose legacy left an indelible mark on history. Everyone perished in combat, and their daughters took over the kingdoms. To erase an enemy's birthplace, he diverted a river through it. However, when he encountered the peaceful Muslim kingdom of Khawarzma, he opted for diplomacy and sent a diplomat to establish trade routes. But the Khawarzma's governor didn't trust the diplomat and killed him, which infuriated the Khan. He led an army of 200,000 soldiers to attack and destroy the Khawarzma kingdom. Even after winning the battle, he sent two troops to burn down all the castles, farms, 
and towns to ensure no Khawarzma survived. He even diverted a river's route to ensure the emperor's birthplace would not exist on the map. He also wiped out the Zizia kingdom for not sending troops to him. The kingdom's history was erased, and no evidence was found. The main enemy archer general got shot by him the Mongolian clan, and Genghis Khan went for revenge. Surprisingly, the archer boldly approached the Khan, acknowledged his deed, and was accepted as a commander in his army. Later, he became a trusted friend of Genghis Khan. As he started his reign, he had rivals among the Mongols for leadership, some of whom were barbaric and insane. One of them was Jamaka, and after a significant victory, Khan burned the enemy generals in 70 cauldrons. This cruelty caused some people to turn their support to Khan. He poured molten silver into an enemy's eyes and ears, and told the population that God sent him to punish them. In Chung, a nobleman who led a large city came in the way of Genghis's conquest. Years before, Genghis Khan sent a massive caravan to create more regional trade routes. He then killed the hated leader by pouring molten silver into his eyes and ears and destroyed the entire population. When Genghis Khan died during the battle with the Zizia kingdom, he desired to be buried where no one could find his corpse. To fulfill his wish, his body was carried miles away into the wilderness by enslaved people escorted by soldiers. The enslaved people buried him in a secret place, and to maintain the secrecy, the warriors massacred them and threw them into the grave. Then, the soldiers rode their horses over it and planted trees to hide the spot. When those warriors went camping again, they were slaughtered to ensure no one would ever talk about where Khan was buried. Khan died in the massacre, but his hidden tomb has yet to be found. Share your thoughts in the comments below and never forget to subscribe to the channel.